serious redditors who gave up pursuing their dream to settle for a more secure or comfortable life. How did it turn out? And do you regret your decision? I went to school for and worked as a video game developer. I saw the crunch times, the frequent layoffs, and general instability of the industry and decided it wasn't for me after all. Been doing work in various industries trying to find something I want to do for a living. Came to the conclusion that I will never like working. So I'm settled in at an aerospace manufacturing plant that has been in operation since WWII, and I can, and probably will spend the rest of my working days here. I've decided that it's better for me to get my life's fulfillment from my hobbies and relationships instead of my work. I started programming at 14 as I wanted to make games. Made a load of them in my spare time. Went to uni to do computer games tech. Switched course in my first week to computer science as I came to the realization that in the games industry I would get paid less to experience more stress and work more hours, all whilst still creating someone else's vision. I'm 30 now, and I'm a dev team lead doing business software, working 95% remotely in a 37.5 hour work week, and in 8 years I have done no more than about 20 hours of overtime in total. I try and make games in my spare time. But even with the amazing free tools these days for instance Unity, VS, Blender, Jimp, I rarely have the energy to do more dev after doing it as a job. I don't regret changing direction, but if I could make games with the same work-life balance, pay, and benefits as working in software dev, I would. Chased my dream, took decades, and did better than I thought I could. Stayed focused throughout. Thing is, I should have re-evaluated long ago. Turns out I was chasing the wrong dream. I regret not recognizing that the dream can and should change. If you blindly chase one dream, the finish line isn't necessarily fulfilling. Sometimes we spend a lifetime climbing a ladder, not knowing it's up against the wrong wall. My dream is to have a comfortable and secure life. Still working on it. Yeah all these comments be, like I had some fun years trying to pursue my dream then it didn't work out so now I just naturally have some sick ass stable job, and am loaded af, and have the best life. I don't have dreams, it'd be fine af with the second part, but no clue how I'd ever get that. Duck in a man I've been scrolling trying to find a normal person for a while. My band didn't work out, so I just got a PhD, and bought a few houses turned out great, just not right at the moment as I'm still job hunting, after having to quit my previous job. Still no regrets though, I went to college, to become a 3D animator, something I always dreamed about, I was top of the class, constantly won awards for my work, I honestly thought I was going to make it big. Then the final semester started and all the seniors were required to go to a special hiring event, where tons of big names would be. I got my portfolio, and resume cop is ready to go, and spent hours researching the big names and their projects as well as rehearsing lots of practice questions. It was devastating. No one would look twice at my stuff. Introduced myself, made some awkward small talk as they were so disinterested, then as I walked away they would immediately put it in the stack with hundreds of other portfolios, and not in the special pile. I switched up my game. I started introducing myself with a quick mention that I had a background in programming I did, thinking that maybe that would give me an edge. Oh boy did it work. Suddenly I was getting personal business cards, phone numbers and emails. My resume was put on the special pile. It was at that moment I realized I went into the wrong field. I was just a tiny insignificant drop in a sea of artists, many of whom were much more talented than I could ever be. Finished up my degree, and went back to college for a BS in computer science. Got my first job right out of college from an internship I did over the summer. The job itself was heaven, and I really enjoyed it. It also helped that I made bank when I was there, paid off all my school loans within 3 years, and had plenty to invest and put into savings. While it sucks not having anything right now, I'm hoping to find something soon. Side note, the 3D stuff I still do as a hobby. Not nearly as good as I once was, but it is still fun and relaxing. I was a child actor. I was relatively successful, I was on a popular soap and even had my 15 minutes of fame. I had TV shows, and films and commercials on the go. 
Of course this meant I was bullied at school. If I answered their incessant questions about what it was like on set, they said I was stuck up for talking about myself. If I didn't answer their questions, they said I was stuck up for not engaging with them. I was talked down to, ignored, laughed at, the usual high school stuff. But for most people, that stuff ends in high school. For famous people, it never ends as we see on the internet daily. Then I met someone on set who told me what it was really like, that if you're not made for it, the fame part can completely destroy you as a person. If you are private or shy or anxious, as I am, it can tear you apart inside, and it's constant, and for the really famous people, it never ever goes away. She helped me recognize that what I loved was a process, the onset family, the job itself, the recognition, the total lack of privacy, and the inevitable bullying just wasn't what I wanted my life to be. She showed me that at this early stage of my career, I could make my choice. I didn't have to just stumble into a lifestyle I wouldn't easily be able to get out of. She showed me the truth, that for most people, by the time they know they hate the lifestyle, it's already too late. When I was 18, I quit my agency and never looked back. Now, 19 years later, in my office job in finance, I make a fraction of what I could have made, and I don't enjoy my work nearly as much as I enjoyed TV and film sets. But I'm anonymous, and I'm happy. The girl I met, these days she can't even go to a grocery store or a petrol station without being mobbed we are not still in touch, but I follow her career. Me, I can go anywhere, and do anything without anyone giving me a second glance. That makes me happy. I hope she is happy too. Reminds me of the young lad who played Charlie in the original film version of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Today he's a veterinarian. No. I was on the path to becoming a professor, and I don't regret leaving academia at all. The pay is terrible, the requirements to achieve your dream can crush the soul out of you, if you're not careful, and the chances of achieving actual job security grow dimmer by the day. There are some things I miss about it, but I really can't regret choosing a good paying, if somewhat more boring, office job that gives me security and disposable income, to pursue my own hobbies and travel before the pandemic, of course. It was fine, but no one gives a shit if you're a professional bassinist and there really isn't enough paying work. I did it professionally for 8 years before quitting to raise kids. Now I work in it. If I had to do it over again I'd have just gotten a real job and not put so much time into an instrument that I don't like playing. Honestly turned out great. I realized my band wasn't going to get a record deal after a few years, and then after playing for other people's bands for a while it started to become less fun. I got a proper job, started working on my career, and used my new spare time to start playing rugby again. Now I've got a really good job in a sector I enjoy working in, married, kids, nice house all that stuff, and I still play rugby on Saturdays pre-pandemic to keep things a little different as well as keeping in shape. I don't really see it as giving up on my dream. It was just recognizing that it wasn't going to happen. I'm very fond of that period of my life and having spent quite a few years chasing that particular dream I don't have any regrets or what ifs about being in a band. About 18 months ago I left my tertiary education in a creative field to take a job opportunity which I applied for but never thought I would get. It was a paid traineeship with a guaranteed transition into six-figure salary, which I will reach in March. My annual salary is about to be more than twice as much as I ever thought it would be for the rest of my life. But every day I go to work I fantasize about leaving and returning to my creative career. I'm still reckoning with how to balance my life and hopefully have the best of both worlds, but my attempts so far have been really challenging. Whether or not I'm capable of doing both has yet to be determined, since my secure job absorbs so much of my energy. Wish me luck. Hey, just dropped in to say that the kind of money you learn could set you up after just a few years to allow you to comfortably transition back into something you love more if you don't end up actually loving this new job. My friend worked in an extremely high paid job for 3 years, didn't go overboard spending and saved a large majority. He now runs his own small company in a field he wanted to impact since we were young. I think this will be really good for Yan in the long run. I made a solid run at becoming a writer. 
It was always my dream as I've been an avid reader my whole life and have always had an active imagination. I studied English in university, read everything I could, and spent my 20s living and traveling overseas. I joined writers groups, did an apprenticeship with an established author, and worked my ass off for years, both abroad and when I returned home. I even got a few short stories published, and I was miserable. Writing fiction has to be the worst paying job in the world, when you factor in the time you put in Stephen King, references this at the start of on writing. Writers like King are extreme outliers, and even he had to work a 9 to 5 while writing Carrie. It is extremely hard to grind out a job all day, then come home, and try to write all evening. Or get up at 5am every day, and write before work. Not only is it difficult to conjure up the juice you need to, write when you're working around a regular life schedule, but everything else in your life slips. You don't have time to work out. You miss out on spending time with friends and family. You're sitting in your desk or chair every night, while your partner is watching TV alone. And if you have kids, good luck. I became overweight, depressed, and miserable. I developed back issues from spending 12 plus hours a day in a chair. I wasn't getting anywhere in life, and while it was nice to get published the odd time, I didn't find the joy in my own writing the way I do in others. So I'll let it go. Now, I have a great job, nice house, and lots of time to spend with my wife and pursue my hobbies. I fixed my back issues and got in great shape until covid and I have grown so much as a person since then. So no regrets. I do think about it from time to time though. I still read a lot and I'm sure that it will come back sometime. It's not like being an athlete. Nothing to say I can't pick it back up any other time. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel for more curated daily reddit stories.